It is not individual causes that we represent. It is the hope of a common good within society. It is the hope that truth and God shall prevail within mankind and that ultimately we shall join in eternal bonding to God's own creation of a cosmos beyond. Sir, welcome. Welcome thank to you. the GMC show. Thank you, thank you. I'm going. I'm going to start with asking you that: How was the Asian Nobel Prize winner in his UG days? So, please tell in us his about. Undergraduate it. Days, yeah. Yes. Well, that's a brilliant question because if I was to answer that in all honesty, I think they would take away the Nobel Prize itself in the first place. But. Uh, you have to understand that basically none of us are born social workers and none of us are uh, born doctors or born to end up where we actually end up. But the point is uh, that somewhere along the journey changes. You may have spent your days in the hostel doing nothing, masti, majak, ye hai, wo hai. Your parents may have said that janam mein ladka mera kuch nahi hone wala hai. But somewhere along the line, your destiny changes and your thoughts change and some degree of maturity happens. And uh, then somehow things start moving and you start taking things forward. There is a female, uh, Emily Abrera. She is the chairman of the Raymond Maxese Foundation. So she said, I mean, I just recently saw one interview of hers and she said that all people who end up doing social work invariably start off young, somehow they get involved at some point in time, the cause for which they are involved becomes their soul and their, it becomes their own self. And that takes the person forward. And having gone forward, there is a there is an expansion of the spirit within that person. And then that person becomes the cause and the cause becomes him. Something of that kind happened to me. I was, uh, I'm blessed by God that it happened in the first place. And that's how things move forward. So to say that how was uh, the undergraduate days of a person who was a Raymond Maxisi awardee? I guarantee you that the undergraduate days of all the people who may have got Raymond Maxisi awards must have been as bindas, as time pass, as full of fun, frolic, etc., etc., as all of us, as each and every GM side. That is the that is the hallmark of change. That finally you change somewhere along the line. Your thinking changes. And I believe that that is the essence of true social work. Whether that true social work really ends up in an award or not is a different story altogether. It may, it may not. But that is the hallmark of true social work. That somewhere along your mind, your heart, your soul starts changing. And you start getting involved with what you are doing. And then that life becomes you and you become that life. And that cause becomes you and that cause, you, you become that cause. Sir, your story is too relatable and for many MBBS students that you are the hope for them, sir. So, sir, did you imagine yourself at a position you are at today in I, your student's life? I never imagined myself having completed MBBS. Forget ima <laughs> imagining myself in this position. My uh, story is very unique. I mean, I don't know how many of you are familiar. But in those days, there was inter-science and after that, there was medicine. So in inter-science, in Bombay University, I was second in Bombay University. There was only one Parulekar who was above me. Both my brothers were in Grand Medical College. So naturally, at that time, there was no vocational counseling, nothing, nothing, nothing. I immediately got into GMC. The dean of other colleges which were there, they were heran. Why have you chosen JJ? I said, that is the college of my choice. That is the best college on earth. So I joined. After I joined, I came 
literally face to face with anatomy and physiology. And suddenly I realized I was never great at biharting. I was never great at rote memory. So I found it very difficult. I found it very, very, very difficult. I mean, I can't tell you how difficult it was. In Gray's Anatomy, that the, I don't know how many of you are familiar. Gray's Anatomy is this thick a book. And in that, there is a, this one, optic nerve. So I felt, my God, this guy is going on and on and on about optic nerve. One year, pages you have to read? You know, it was too much, yaar. I mean, I felt like writing a letter to Gray. Gray, of course, was not there. I felt like writing, how many of you will kill a child? One nurse, si yaar. Little si nurse, leave him too, yaar. Let it go. But it went on. So first MBBS, anatomy, physiology. By the second semester of physiology, I had collapsed of that first MBBS. So I felt that no, this is not mine. And suddenly I realized, my God, I am good at maths. And in the 8th standard, there is a book on maths, which was 8, 9, 10th, 11th. All the four years combined in a single book. I realized that I had made a guide to that entire book when I was in the 8th standard. So I was that good at maths. And I felt by guilty. Ho gaya. In those days, the originals were not kept with the college. It was kept with the student. So I took my this thing and I went to opposite Excel CS. There was Indian cost and works accountant. So I went and joined there. It was only evening classes. JJ Mesa kuch attendance ka to kuch hai nahi. So I went there. Six months, I put my heart into that. I cracked that exam. I cracked the damn thing, the charter cost accountancy thing. First semester, knockout. And this anatomy and physiology, I just barely passed. So by the time first MBBS ended, I was more a chartered accountant, less a medico. But came second MBBS. And second MBBS, you are exposed to the wards. In first MBBS, you are not exposed to the wards. And JJ in those days, and JJ even now is full of patients. You know, I mean, patients are on the floor, patients are on the corridor. So what happened was that I, giving you my background, I had gone through a very difficult childhood. My, I lost my dad when I was in the, when I was in the 8th standard, we, three of us, 8th standard, 9th standard, 10th standard, 11th standard. All of us came, came up through great difficulties. You know, we were, we, we used to go door to door selling books. We used to sell uh, posters of uh, cine stars like Rajesh Khanna and Devan and then what not. And things were very difficult. I used to walk four kilometers till the station and come back. Somehow, because of all the difficulties and whatever, I could identify with a person who was in pain. And in second MBBS, I felt that whatever, that guy sitting opposite me on the bed admitted is in pain. And I, that, that thing somehow connected. Being very bad at studies, I never knew what the diagnosis of that opposite guy was. I mean, it was too much. But I connected with his pain, you know. I, mean, I, 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 I empathized with him. And that kind of made me spend a lot of time with them. I would play Antakshari. Kisine karam laya to karam khelte the, time pass chalo tha. But vice versa, I didn't know what you were suffering from. I was very bad at academics. Then, Satoskars, you know, side effects of drugs, ek side effect, dusra, tisra, chautha, pacha side effect, ek hi drug ke. Physio, I mean, pathology, cellule, cell ke under, cell ke under, cell ke under, cell. Arre yaar, it was just too much. Second MBBS, I just barely passed. Third MBBS, there was a dear friend of mine, senior, one doctor, Rajan Garg. He is married to one of my classmates, Surinder. So he, in those days, I don't know what happened, you know, he took some sympathy for on me or whatever, I don't know, I mean, we gelled very well. So he had helped me pass the third MBBS exam. So I became a doctor. Just barely I passed, must be 51, 52. Just barely I passed. I said, I can't do this anymore, let me finish with studies. Enough is enough. So I took the general practice. I went to Vasai, remote area in those days. I started my practice there. Somehow, one and a half hours, I tried practicing, practicing, practicing. And the practice didn't take off. And I was back to square one. Bhukha, Kangal, that types. Abhi kya karne ka? So, some, my brother told me that there's one friend of his who has a non-medical job available. As an administrative officer in Institute of Energy Management. So, I thought, okay, let me do that. Now, money was also required in the house. So, I did that. I was getting paid 1,500 in those days. Eh, 1,500 was a phenomenal amount. I put my heart and soul into that. Another six months went by when suddenly one of my seniors, one Dr. Gansham Bimani, he met me and he said, boss, there's a, there's a seat going vacant and diploma in psychiatry in JJ. I said, dekhar Gansham, I said, I need the money very badly. My family needs the money very badly. I dare not leave the job. I can't leave the job. So, 
can you manage the attendance no genuinely honestly technically there are no legality of house posts or something the problem is that house worker he said i'll manage i went and met dr mrs setna only once baaki sab form filling ye wo sab ho gaya i continued with my non medical job i didn't see a single patient and 15 days just before dpm part 1 i took a break from the non medical job studied little bit here and there 15 days passed my dpm part i continued with a non medical job another 15 days one month before the dpm part 2 i took a break studied a little bit dr bimani took me to the ward showed me five cases and i appeared and i cleared jj bindas giri being what it is the examiner uh, one i think dr mrs disuza was there she said uh, do you know about triflu parasite i said no it is not used in our college that much her husband was in our college bindas fake company <laughs> and i got through so i was a qualified psychiatrist having seen exactly five patients having studied exactly 15 days but i was a qualified psychiatrist ab uske baad ek post aaya km mein jj i'm a gs medical college md psychiatry so i said chal let's take that then i gave up the non medical job i joined that when i joined that the first house post was in medicine which i did very well i somehow my professor johari was in mgm hospital was there very nice second house post was in cooper so the unit only two house post in those days to appear for md so i went to cooper in cooper guess who was my lecturer my lecturer was my classmate from san one dr smita ganla and uh, she was a md psychiatry and she was a gold medalist and she was my lecturer and she was beautiful <laughs> knockout kind of thing you know so we fell in love abhi when we fell in love cooper mein sara lecturer getting hits to a houseman talk of the town aur mera padhai pe to dhyan tha hi nahi i was finding it very difficult mera bola shaadi to isi se hi karne ke apne ko aur sala gold medalist hai psychiatrist hai you know she would tell me the effects of side effects of lithium like this 1 2 3 4 main sala ungli dekhte rahe main lithium mein kisko interest hai but in all that magaj mari i failed so md psychiatry first attempt failed my father in law was also a gm side he was a retired director of medical education and research big shot guy retired he called me bharat if you don't clear in the second attempt think of something else other than my daughter mai ghabar gaya mera sala to maar dalega mere ko so then i started studying little bit to padhte padhte thoda idhar udhar haath paon mara ye wo jo bhi hai i went to the exam exam ke bahar anand atkan was there he was here come specifically to just to help me He told me, "Boss, the case which is there inside, you know, it looks like schizophrenia, but it is bipolar." I said, "Yeah, Jabhi, you are so bad. Tell me the difference between schizophrenia and bipolar." Yeah. <laughs> Boy, just after that, his hair started falling. Now he is falling. But I cleared. I just, 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 just barely cleared. I cleared. April first, my result came. April thirtieth, I got married. I said, "Boy, the girl is going to get married." So you know, this is typical JJ thinking. You know, GMC thinking is, teaches you all that practicality. Because first of all the girl was good. Second of all, she had all the knowledge of psychiatry. मैं तो साला बेकार था. अगर मैं practice करने को जाए मेरे को मालूम नहीं क्या चल रहा है patient के साथ. So I made her sit next to me. Gave up the lectureship job. She was sitting next to me. We started practice. That's how the whole story goes. Now comes the tri- the, the 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 difference part where like uh, Emily Abrera of the Raymond Maxis Foundation said that where do you change? So one day we were sitting in the restaurant. Having a routine, bada summer. When just across the road, me and my wife, wife were sitting. Just across the road, there was a guy who was sitting there, and he had long hair and he was muttering to himself, "I'm damn dirty." अपने को दूर से लगा ये स्केज़ोफ़ नहीं है. We didn't feel like doing anything. I mean, let let's be very honest about it. वो चल रहा है, खा रहा है, जो भी है, time pass. हम लोग अपना खा रहे हैं. When suddenly, what happened was that that guy took an empty coconut shell. And taking that empty coconut shell, there was a nala which was running behind. He dipped that coconut shell into the nala, took out the water, and dhaar karke usne pura ka pura piliya. Single shot. Oh boy, unbelievable. So then that thing happened. Ki yar, this is wrong. Yar, what what is he doing? Now without realizing what is right or wrong, without realizing what is the legality of the situation, we just crossed over and asked him, "Will you come with us?" He said yes. 
Suppose he would have said no, maybe I would have never reached where I have reached today. But he said yes and he came. When he came, we had just started a very small nursing home, five bedded nursing home we had started off our own. Sab kuch bech ke, mera wife ka jewelry, marriage ka jitna mila tha, sab kuch dawa pe laga ke, HDFC se loan leke, ye wo dunya bhar ka. I mean, I remember that Mangal Sutra which she had got, I had put it into the bank and taken a mortgage on it. She had done that, but ye le liya patient. Now patient le liya, or patient started improving. When he started improving, he started speaking English. When he started speaking English, more and more, more and more, he he said, "I am a B.Sc. graduate. I am a diploma in medical lab technology. I had come to Bombay for a job. Job mila ni." Then we realized, "My God, this is an educated guy. He turned out to be Telugu." So we he improved, 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 and he gave us his address. He gave us his address. We sent a letter. In those days, there was no mobile and phone and whatnot. We sent a letter. That guy's father turned out to be the Zilla Parishad superintendent of one particular. Place in Andhra Pradesh, Kadapa. He came by flight along with his brother. So I, I and my wife thought, "Ki sala dekh yar." Finally, here is somebody who is educated. Here are parents who are educated, and nobody can do anything. Nobody knows what to do, and there is not a single NGO anything working on this thing. That set the ball moving. In those days, we didn't even bother to register our shraddha rehabilitation. Nothing. We were just doing. पेशेंट पिकअप करते थे लाते थे ठीक हो गया गांव भेजते थे वी वेंट ऑन टेन फिफ्टीन पेशेंट्स हो गया एक आर्टिकल आया टाइम्स ऑफ इंडिया में ये वो देन वन डे वी हैड अ प्राइवेट पेशेंट सो दैट प्राइवेट पेशेंट सन टोल्ड अस दैट हिज लेक्चरर अ जेजे स्कूल ऑफ आर्ट्स लेक्चरर गोल्ड मेडलिस्ट फ्रॉम जेजे स्कूल ऑफ आर्ट्स वॉज ऑन द रोड विथ स्किज ऑफ इंडिया It was just harrowing. Just that thought when he said, also I still remember. I said, "Oh my God, gold medalist lecturer is on the road." I said, "Let's go." मेरे पास एक ambassador था. I and my wife went, brought him. Laya usko he was very violent, catatonic state of mind. Usko hum logon ne admit kiya. He was refusing anything, refusing to take meals. Ye hai, wo hai. IV pe chhe saath din chalaya, chalaya. Bada difficult tha. Then we decided to give me cities. When we gave me cities, I called my friend Kowadekar. He was an assistant at that time. He is no more. Great guy, but I told him, "Yar, boss, you city didn't get." But consent, I said, "Dekh, yar, consent, consent, to kuch hai nahi hai." Apun raste se patient laya laya abhi jo hai so hai. But we gave that guy improve. Abhi nasi vesa ho gaya that some of those students were very attached to this lecturer, so they used to keep coming every Sunday. His own students and kasa hai, kasa hai. He was Maharashtra. Kasa hai, kaay hai, hai, tiya hai. They they were very pally with him. He was also a very loving guy. सो सडनली द स्टूडेंट सेट सर आपने इतना कर दिया देखो पेशेंट ठीक भी हो गया है अपना सर ठीक भी है उसको वापस नौकरी पे लगा दे गया जे जे में आई सेट ठीक है ट्राई करते हैं सो इन दोज डेज इन मंत्रालय दर इज अ सेक्रेटरी ऑफ एडुकेशन कुमुद बंसल मी माई वाइफ एंड डॉक्टर भिमानी डॉक्टर भिमानी ऑल्सो इन्वॉल्व इन ऑल दिस वी बाज इन टू द कैबिन टिपिकल जे जे एटीट्यूड अपॉइंटमेंट था नहीं अंदर घुस गए तो बोला हम वी आर डॉक्टर्स वी आर डूइंग दिस वर्क एंड कैन यू हेल्प आउट शी सेट या वी विल डू इट कंसिडर एम री इंस्टेटेड अरे वो जो उसने बोला कंसिडर हम री इंस्टेटेड हम लोग छः महीना मंत्रालय के चक्कर काटते 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 पाँव सारे जख्मी हो गए फाइनली बट ही गॉट इज जॉब बैक वेन ही गॉट इज जॉब बैक अभी नसीब ऐसा रहता है ना समाउ थिंग्स गो फॉरवर्ड ऑल इज कलीग्स ऑल इज पीपल हु न्यू एम सेट वाई डोंट यू है फंड रेजिंग आर्ट एग्जीबिशन एंड एवरी न्यूज पेपर कवर इट वॉज जस्ट फनाम मेरे को लगा था वी हैव रीच द मून यार As far as that exhibit, and everywhere I would take this guy, and everybody had heard about him. Now see the tragedy. I felt that you know that this guy is having mental illness. You know it. Everybody knew about him, but nobody has come forward to help. And that is the tragedy. They could have done it, but maybe they didn't, and maybe it was there that that outpouring that we we should have helped him out earlier. So they did it. The exhibition was a grand success. Myself, my wife, Dr. Bimani. I mean, three months we were at it. Believe me, not a single private patient, nothing seen. Totally at it. We had, I mean, I, I had a printer known to me, Kagal Kagalwala Garge. He had at that time, 1993, the printing bill was five and a half lakhs. It's outstanding. I said, "Me, has the exhibition success been? Then we will do it." That was a big turning point. From that, we got funds and we started a small place in Delhi, sir. We purchased the place and attempted to start a small center. 
two floor bungalow everything yeah so at that point of time we set up this two floor place and there was resistance from the people who were outside and all the residents got together in the neighboring buildings and said this is a high rise area and we can't have a mental hospital over here so all the people of the neighboring buildings got together and started hand bill distribution and this and that and what not there are banners put up that mental hospital has started in this area huge between buildings built there are journalists who are staying there they put articles against us finally one day i was in delhi trying to find, follow up on the foreign contribution uh, regulation when what happened was that there was a morcha which was taken out the morcha was taken out with all 100 150 residents coming together dr watwani murdabad gali gali mein shor hai shraddha chor hai all that kind of thing and my wife was there and dhakka dukhi mein mera wife ko dhakka laga and she fell down uh, things have become big then we went and met jayanti ben mehta she was a member of parliament at that time and dr bimani knew her well so when we went she was very decent she heard us out and she rang up the police commissioner of mumbai the police commissioner rang up the deputy police commissioner of that area and the deputy police commissioner got a havaldar on the this of our ngo 24 by 7 so a, an ngo is working with a havaldar 24 by 7 on the footsteps oh boy that's un- unbelievable then jayanti ben mehta we told her to come for the inauguration she came she tried to pacify the neighbors things didn't work out neighbors ekdam khunnas mein the finally the neighbors went to court abhi court was in south bombay i was staying in borivali itna kuch sadhan going by train coming back and this is one hell of a harrowing time here our advocate at that time was a guy called anand grover Anand Grover is the same guy who won the LGBT case recently, around two years back in the Supreme Court. So Anand Grover, busy person, two three hours, we are sitting in his office, bar, sitting there, this, that, arranging that whole thing, getting that, getting the dynamics of that whole psychiatry. He didn't know what is that psychiatry all about. We had to give him all that information. So giving, giving him all that information, one and a half years the case, case went on, and for every day of that entire one and a half years, believe me. i my wife felt that let's give it up yeah let's not do this yaar when society itself does not appreciate what you are trying to do what is the point of doing it but every day that thought would come that if we give up if we give up then for the rest of our life we will never be able to look at a wandering mentally ill destitute eye to eye i mean you can't you see them on the roads you see them on the streets you see them on the platforms and i at least would never be able to face them neither my wife would be able to face them nor dr bimani but easier said than done i mean the, the the desire to back out the desire to back out was maximum during that period sleepless nights you were crying when you go to sleep and kahan kahan phas gaye yaar hum log neki karne ja rahe hain dekho yaar kya ho raha hai and no support because we were not that well known and people you know how it is when somebody is in trouble nobody wants to touch that person with a 10 foot pole so it was not that other people were coming forward but we held on touch wood we held on and finally we won that case we won that case and the judge said that the mentally ill people are as much human as anybody else and they deserve a place in society and they deserve to be treated within society so it became a landmark judgment and then the thing started going so what i'm trying to tell you guys as as uh, young gm sites is that the question is not whether society appreciates your work or not the question is not whether whether you are truly applauded by the society or not the question is in your own conscience are you at peace with the decision that you have taken the society may tell you back off and nobody will listen they'll say no no you did the right thing i have been building wale ko pasand nahi itna bada bada ye kiya tere wife ko dhakka de kar ke gira diya aisa kal ke tarikh mein koi tere upar gaadi chala lega all that is the society speaking the crux is what is your conscience saying as future doctors of our country and of the world what is your conscience saying is your conscience telling you that this is the right thing to do or is it the wrong so that somehow i mean that became the turning point of our thought pattern 
that at the end of the day it is not important whether fellow colleagues fellow psychiatrists classmates the lay citizen tell you that this is right or this is wrong let them say whatever they want to say if your atma aapki zameen aapki atma aapka soul if your atma tells you that what you are doing is wrong hold on you hold on that that i mean we had all the time in the world to introspect and think and cry and everything but somehow touch wood that thing sank in that finally you are doing everything not because of anything external you are doing that something because you believe in that something you believe it is wrong i mean you can't for the rest of your life see a roadside person and say what you did was right and back off you can't you know this 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 is a beautiful thing this is there's a guy called steven munsey he won the raymond maxey award in 2021 so this emily ebrera asked him as to where do you get this energy from to go on and on and on and he said just 2021 raymond he said i would be a liar if i said that i did not cry i would be a liar if i said that i did not feel like backing out i would be a liar if i felt that i i had the courage to go on and on and on but i have held on i have held on purely because i get the strength from those people whom i am helping out he is he is working for on the cause of refugees world worldwide refugees oh boy very difficult task very difficult so he said i see these guys in such miserable condition in such miserable condition that despite that they try and help each other out so that gives you hope and that gives you resilience and you then you continue A brilliant statement i mean i i felt that i was so inspired by that one particular talk which i saw between emily and uh, uh, stephen munsey that that is the common issue of the whole thing that did you change and did you believe in that cause if you changed and if you believed in that cause then that's something sir do you feel that you have any mentor for yourself and how significant the role in your life the play role in your life I don't know how many of you have read this book, The Buddha and His Dhamma. It is written by Baba Sahib Ambedkar. Ambedkar has mentioned in his book that men are born unequal. Men are born unequal. Some are born rich, some are born poor, some are born healthy, some are born handicapped, some are born tribal, some are born in affluent families. Some have intelligence, some don't have intelligence. if and all of them all men have to struggle for existence if in this struggle for existence if inequality be the rule of the game if inequality be the rule of the game then the weakest shall be pushed against the wall the weakest shall be pushed against the wall oh boy what a sentence now one may say that at the end of the day this is okay because it is survival of the fittest but the question which he has raised is are the fittest the best so religion teaches you equality so since that time i have started believing that look whatever it is i on this side of the road and that guy on the opposite side of the road are equal it is just his luck that that inequality crept in and he ended up on the road with schizophrenia and i am ended up on this side now can we bridge that inequality i am in the blessed 5% who are who have gone through gmc how many of how many how many people all over india have have got that naseeb people don't and what do we do about it we take it for granted we take it for granted that this is ours the truth is that this is not ours the truth is that that we are blessed that is the truth unless you start thinking in those directions your philosophy never changes and once your philosophy has changed then you start identifying with the underprivileged in society when you start identifying with the underprivileged in society then you are on a different wicket altogether that is mentorship just by just by that one single passage i mean i am moved i am i am on a i am on a different trajectory altogether you look at rabindran tagore tagore has written that if you if the sun goes out of your life and you start crying then the tears are preventing you from looking at the stars what a statement here and the man who has started doing something 
the man who has started planting in a field knowing that he will never reap those fruits has understood the meaning of life that about just about sums up the philosophy of the whole thing that what are we doing ultimately as doctors what are we doing as doctors whether it is gmc or xyz college what are we doing as doctors are we truly helping out the underprivileged within society are we truly going to that next step where we are helping out the population who don't have this kind of luck you have the brains you 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 must have done very well in need to have gotten to gmc such is life but then that's your luck how far are we taking that luck in helping out the next man and believe me what is the next man what is the next man you'll be shocked 363 million 36 crores of indians are below the poverty line and the poverty line is 32 rupees a day that is the other side of the coin which we don't look at with the bulk of doctors don't look at and they don't look at the opposite side because are he got 63% i got 64% and that one got 65 that's the way that's the way we start thinking we we start looking at life like frogs in a pond therein lies the blunder of our society and unless we change that i believe things are not going to move i mean people say oh my god look at dr bharat tane raymond maxis award he taliya ye wo he is a messiah what is the real truth let me tell you the real truth 1.8 million people in india 18 lakhs are homeless 50 to 60% of these people have mental illness so you have 10 lakh people who are mentally ill and on the roads and what did dr bharat utwani and shraddha do are we just picked up treated and reunited 9000 of these destitute that's all now the question is what happens to the remaining line like 91000 where is the truth in that and i get an award out of the blues as she said i, I am considered as a, one of the lights of asia or whatever this is all not based in the real truth of the nightmare or of the of the actual ground reality which exists in front of all of us that 9 lakh 91000 people are on the streets of india wandering and mentally ill and for what was it their fault that they got schizophrenia no i mean a jj school of arts lecturer has got gold medalist has got schizophrenia whose fault is it nobody's that is bad luck so did we do something for that person did we really acknowledge the fact that we did not get schizophrenia he got it unless you acknowledge that fact you don't move forward and when you move forward you feel whatever you have done yaar it is 9000 is nothing it is pani kam chai hai i mean i i don't think honestly i mean i accepted the award that's a different thing because the award did a lot of great has done a lot of good for the cause of the wandering mentally ill but truly you ask me do i deserve the award i don't because the statistics say i don't more number of people are there on the road than i can ever dream of that is the reality of life and unless we accept this reality as young doctors things are not going to move is there any uh, fatherly figure for you who inspired you to choose the path you are on yes there is i mean baba amte is the fatherly figure who inspired me again like i said you know you you i don't know how many of you have been to anandman and how many of you have been to himal kasa and what not are there people who have been there yeah so my social worker at that time arvin shinoy he is no more he just passed away he said let's go and meet baba amde i said theek hai i mean to be very honest i had heard about him but i was not in awe of him or anything other than we went by car we went to anandman huge place huge phenomenal place 2000 plus leprosy patients spread out over acres and unbelievable work. but nasib being what it is and kalyung being what it is baba amde was not there I mean, who I saw that I had the car because the teacher was with me, and Baba Amte was with Prakash Amte, and Prakash Amte was in Himal Kasa. So I said, "Gadi to hai apni I rang up my wife. I said, "I'll come later. I, let's. I have to meet Baba Amte." She said, "Okay, carry on. We went. Now, a hundred kilometers before 
गडचिरोली हेमल कसा इन द कार इन द डेंस जंगल्स ऑफ गडचिरोली वी केम अक्रॉस अ पेशेंट हु स्किजोफ्रेनिक बोथ हैंड्स बोथ लेग्स इन चेन्स इन चेन्स हा ओ बॉय इट वॉज अनबिलेबल न कोई आगे न पीछे न दाएं न बाएं जंगल में साला वन स्किजोफ्रेनिक गाय वॉकिंग अभी द फर्स्ट इंस्टिंग इज लेट्स नॉट टच एम काय को फालतू में पड़े सो आई टोल दैट अरविंद शिना आज के मेदर ही वॉन्ट्स टू कम सो यू आस्ट एम दैट फॉलो द महाराष्ट्र इंजन है कशा सड़ी यू मी थे ओके है ठीक है मेरे को चल बला टल गई ट्वेंटी किलोमीटर्स फर्दर इट वॉज बिकमिंग सनसेट है ना सो माई कॉन्शियंस काइंड ऑफ गॉट द गॉट अ लिटल अपसेट एंड आई फील्ड कि सला कोई नहीं दिख रहा है पूरे जंगल में ये बंदा अकेला है वॉट विल हैपन टू हिम सो आई यू टर्न द कार बींग साइकेट आई वॉज एबल टू पटाम एंड ही अग्री टू कर गेट इन टू द कार Once he agreed to get into the car, abhi he he had both hands, both legs were in chains. He had been passing urine and motions in his clothes since God knows when. He was thinking very badly. So I had a scissor. I cut off all his clothes, made him naked. I had a chadar. I put it round him, put him into the car. Let's go. Abhi hundred kilometers suddenly, my heart thud thud ani laga. I mean, sir, Baba, I'm telling you, mal bhi nahi ki hum log aa rahe. Prakash, I'm telling you, mal bhi nahi. Those were not the days of the mobile. So I thought that guy will get boiling mad. Anna Lena, Anna Dena, you are bringing one patient inside. Anyway, we went. Eight o'clock in the night, we reached. Prakash Amde must have just finished his opening. You are absolutely sir. He was like exhausted, totally zonked. I told him, sir, please, ah, bura mat mano. But I have got this patient. Just remove his chains. I'll be very happy. So Prakash Amde suddenly he called for a chinni and hathoda himself, and he started the process himself. Oh boy, dead ganda laga usko chain nikalne mein. Purely because that if you hit the wrong thing, you will injure the person. So, nikal the, dire dire, tok 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 tok. He didn't speak a word. Baba Amte was lying there on the bed. He didn't speak a word. Meri to phati padi thi. I also didn't speak a word. Finally, uska chain nikal gaya. And that guy went. I went to sleep. I got up at four o'clock in the morning. When I got up at four o'clock, that the guest room was just above. I came down. I came down and I saw this Baba Amte guy awake, and he was crying. अच्छा क्या हुआ ही सर पूरी रात मेरे को नींद नहीं आई बोला हुआ क्या ही सर होल नाइट आई कुड नॉट स्लीप आई वॉज थिंकिंग टू माई सेल्फ एंड हाउ कैन अ मैन बी पुट इन टू सोसाइटी विथ चेंज ऑन एंड वॉट काइंड ऑफ एगनी दैट बॉय हैज गॉन थ्रू एंड यू वॉन्ट बिलीव यूर ही सर आई एक्चुअली टुक द चेंज एंड ही एक्चुअली शोड मी ही एक्चुअली टुक द चेंज एंड ट्राई टू वॉक एंड सर भरत इट इज सो डिफिकल्ट And how did this guy do it? I was so zapped, so zapped. I mean, two thousand leprosy patients that guy had. He had got Padma Shri and uh, multiple awards. He had a whole room full of awards. Yeah. But the fact that he saw a man in pain, and he still got moved to tears. That sadbhav na jo bolte na, that thing that you know that guy is in pain. and you are so moved so moved that you have not slept the whole night that are like meeting god first person i mean i couldn't believe that somebody can actually move be moved so much by pain that you see a guy in chains and all that you can do is think about him in the whole night and that was not that you have done less you have done 2000 patients you have cleaned them you have bathed them you have you are you are a famous personality all over india and still the guy is moved by a cause which does which with which is just just simple compassion for anybody who's down that was too much i mean i i had lost like i said i lost my dad very early so you know i was hunting for that father figure father figure and suddenly i saw them i felt i i met god yeah and then we were there only abhi kaam dhanda tha nahi i waited for two days more over there and he and i were talking and i mean i can't tell you what a what a what a guy yeah and he in his biography later i read that god has given pain to people so that there can be tenderness it is easy to love god it is difficult to follow the commandment love your neighbor that's why when you were talking about that spirituality thing ultimately that is what changes that finally it is you may you may be very spiritual can you love your neighbor who is down and out and he said that the herd 
never waits for the wounded within itself somebody else has to help out the herd never waits for the wounded deer somebody else has to help out and that someone became him and that someone over a period of time became me do i i mean i i don't say that we have done anything as compared to what he has done but we tried we are trying that aspect of life is what changes you that aspect of thinking now it didn't stop there when i left he told me bharat what are you doing is good but it's bahut chota hai yaar kya kar rahe ho do something big i big bole to finally you have to get out of bombay bombay mein se get out karte karte we started hunting for plots outside bombay i went to badlapur i saw some plots there and this guy every 15 days he would ring up bharat kit par post project post le are yaar mera dimag ka dahi bana diya usne at one point i told my wife i said ye budde ko koi kaam dena nahi hai mere hi piche pad gaya but he held on he was hard of hearing even then he would ring up bharat where is the project kit par post le re project i said my god finally we got the project i told him i said baba jaga me dali karjat madhe i am coming i said where are you coming he said i am coming for the bhumi pujan announce it i baba it is just a plot of land there is no electricity there is no water tumhi kai no kara mala jangal madhe rahayachi sava hai i will manage myself you manage the inauguration mera halat kharab i printed the card january 23 2005 Baba Amte is coming for the inauguration. I had printed the card. I had sent around thousand cards to the courier guy. When suddenly I put on the TV and I found that Baba Amte critical and admitted. My health was bad. I withdrew all the cards. I had to wear a coat and a tie to the school. I had to wear a tie to the school. I had to wear a tie to the school. I had to wear a tie to the school. I had to wear a tie to the school. I had to wear a tie to the school. I had to wear a tie to the school. I had to wear a tie to the school. I had to wear a tie to the school. I had to wear a tie to the school. come and do the work but despite all that despite the fact that he did not survive he used to call me up and say how is the project shaping out how is the project shaping out now you imagine that a guy who has reached the pinnacle of success in terms of social work has got nothing particularly to do with psychiatric illness is following up on me out of his own proactiveness not because i told him to follow up out of his own proactiveness and asking bharat how far is the project reached kaisa chal raha hai that is greatness that is compassion and that is giving that is giving in the true sense of the word so that struck me that 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 feature of his that can you go the distance in helping out someone can you go that one meter more can you go that last step can you go that last yard and that remained with me that nahi you can do i mean if a person wants he can do it he would follow up he would follow up he would follow up he would follow up you know when i when finally he expired in 2008 so i had gone for his funeral and i felt that the number of people who were crying and who were not related to him had to be seen to be believed yaar had to be seen to be believed yaar the leprosy patient the blind patient the deaf patient the dumb patient the handicapped everybody was crying profusely i mean i remember when i was a kid i had seen the photos of uh, vinoba bhave's death funeral and that procession after him and you i remember the crowds i saw the photos of those crowds at ramanand tagore's uh, funeral and i felt look at these look at these people yaar i mean here is somebody passing away he is not related to those people but people are crying profusely as if they have lost their one and only yeah. and i was also crying profusely as if i had lost my one and only because at the end of the day he became somewhere down the line like a substitute father figure that is what takes you forward can you can you go that distance i mean I, all this i have learned from him that finally on the opposite side of the road is a man who is in chains is a man who is handicapped can you go that distance and help him out He did it, so I felt. Let me try and emulate him. Let's let's keep on doing it. And one of his mentor, by the way, since we are talking about mentorship, his mentor was Vinoba Bhave. I don't know how many of you have heard about Vinoba Bhave and read about him. So Vinoba Bhave had come to his 
institution the the first hut which which was which was anand one in the hut he has written a small paper which says that ye kutia se ye hut se sne and seva ki nadi bahegi and that one single letter of vinoba bhave finally took baba amte from that point to the point that where he reached a world renowned person and look at the coincidence look at the entire coincidence of what i would call kalyung synchronization the first guy who got the raymond maxis award from india was vinoba bhave in 1958 in 1985 baba amte got the raymond maxis award in 2008 his son prakash amte and his wife mandakini amte got the raymond maxis and in 2018 me being the adopted son of baba amde got the award that is synchronization and raymond max is not having any connection with all the four of us still brought us together so that is the loop of social service which goes on yeah that's how it works sir and baba amde uh, received the award on very same tithi like guru purnima and you uh, you believe him as a mentor so it's oh, yes. amazing uh, I mean, that's how threads are connected yes the truth is that he was a blessed person the truth is that he was born into a rich family but he chose to do something for the underprivileged within society it it starts off by accident it starts off in youth and it, but at the at if you if you are following your own passion if you are following your own soul i don't believe that he ever hankered for the raymond maxis award I don't believe that he ever hankered for the Padma Shri. I don't believe that he ever hankered for a single award that he got in his life. I believe he did what he did from his soul. He believed that it was unjust that a man could be underprivileged and stay on the other side of the road. He believed that it was unjust that a man could be changed and put on the roads. And he he could actually feel for that guy. He could actually feel for that guy. That is what takes to this. I remember I was going through a very bad patch of depression and this and that and what not. You know and. and my wife was with me and we were talk gossiping with baba and he my wife told my uh, baba that that my husband is all the time seeming depressed so he smiled and he said it is not depression it is restlessness and the restlessness will do him do him a world of good he is searching let him search and that was prophetic words because only after i met him only after I, everything evolved that i came to came to be at peace with myself so at the end of the day i mean supposing supposing you take that first guy whom you picked up and supposing that guy turns out to be a bsc pass guy and you are unable to reunite him with his family and suppose you don't get this, but you would still continue because at the end of the day that satisfaction that you get by doing the right thing by doing what your conscience tells you to do takes you forward takes you forward and i and i learned it from him i i realized that he had that he had that quality of wanting to do something good irrespective of whether people touch his feet don't touch his feet doesn't matter i mean somebody asked me after the award that are you be, have you become more motivated now i said no i was motivated before i am motivated now the motivation level has not changed but ultimately what you are doing is what you believe by your conscience is the right thing to do and that's how it goes